Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. It is time for Bible study. I hope that you are ready. This is a good topic on today. And so I hope that you invite someone. So please invite a family member, matter of fact, not even a member, invite your family, your friends, your friends' friends, because we're going to get into um, this lesson tonight. So just give me a moment. I'm going to take a moment to share. And then also, as you join, you should be sharing. And for those that are watching at a later time, I still hope that you share. So even if you're watching this days, months later, make sure that you still share. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a moment to share. And again, I hope that you do the same. And then we're going to get right into this Bible study. And this topic, it's an important topic. This is one that I'm sure you may have studied before, but we're going to cover it again because it's just needed in times like this. And so I'm going to go ahead and tell you the topic of this Bible study. We are studying prayer tonight. And as you know, in times like these, we definitely need to be praying and seeking God. And so continue sharing, come on in the room, tell a friend. And then I also encourage you to have your Bible on hand. I encourage you to take notes. Um, we will have the scriptures that we drop in the chat, but I still encourage you to take notes tonight. That way you're able to go back and read some of what we discussed tonight. So I definitely encourage you to take notes. And then I'm going to monitor the chat as well and just see your feedback. I also encourage you to participate. If you have any comments, if you have any scriptures, if you have any examples, if you have any testimonies or stories, feel free to drop them in the chat. And if I have time or if I'm able to, I will pause and read comments or whatever you leave in the chat. And so I just want to welcome you all, all that is joining. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I see Evangelist Thomas is on the line. That's my dear mother. God bless you, mother. You can watch her every Tuesday. You just go to her page. You can watch her every Tuesday at 630. And it's always such a blessing. Anisha, Sister Anisha White, thank you for joining. God bless you. Sister Tony, and God bless you. Thank you for joining. And so I'm going to go ahead and open us up in prayer because we have a lot to cover. I'm hoping that we get through it tonight. I actually plan on doing a part two because I don't really want to rush this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and open us up in prayer and then we're going to go ahead and begin. So God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Father God, for this opportunity that we have to study your word, to discuss your word. God, it's such a blessing that you left us this wonderful man. Um, this manual that we can study and learn from. And so God, I'm asking that you will be with me tonight, that you'll speak through me, God, that whatever you desire to say, Father God, that you'll speak it through me and that your people will be in ble will be blessed, encouraged, whatever you desire to do in my life, in their lives, that it will be done tonight. And so God, we give you thanks and praise for all that you're doing and for all that you will continue to do in Jesus name. Amen. <clears throat> All right, so welcome Sister Uplifted Heart. I see my mother in love on the line, um, Sister Evita, Mother Evita. And so, as I said before, some of you joined, please make sure that you like and share this. This is a very important topic. We're discussing prayer tonight. And what I was saying before, and what the elders used to say, if ever time we need to pray, now is the time. And so that's what we're going to be discussing tonight. So now say you were speaking casually with someone and the person asked you, what is prayer? Say they just honestly, they had no clue. 
and they said, okay, what exactly is prayer? What would you tell someone that asked you, what is prayer? What would you say to them? So that's the question. What is prayer? And I have a few definitions. I'm going to give you a chance to answer and then we'll go through some of the definitions that I have. Again, for those that are joining, have joined, thank you for joining. Share, like, um, and I also encourage you to take notes. So the question is, what is prayer? What is prayer? What would you tell someone if they said, you know what, I don't really understand what prayer is. I've never done it before. What would you tell them? What is prayer? And so I see one response in the chat from Pastor McLeod. He's the pastor of Fountainside, our church, Fountainside uh, Church of God. And he said that prayer is to seek God. And so what else? What would you say prayer is? If someone was to ask you and they had no idea what prayer was, what would you tell them? I see Evangelist Thomas. She said prayer is communication with God. Okay, that's good. That's good. I agree with that. Any more answers? I'm going to give a few more seconds and then I'm just going to get going with this. What is prayer? What would you tell someone? What is prayer? Okay, so what I'll do is I'll continue on and as you leave answers, I will go ahead and read them out. So I'm going to go ahead and give some of the definitions that I have. So I do have exactly what Evangelist Thomas put down in the chat. That's what I have. I said prayer is communication with God. I also have to beseech or to ask of God, whatever you're desi desiring to. So to beseech or ask, to call to one's aid supplicate. And when I looked up the word supplicate in the Marian dictionary, it means to make a humble entreaty, especially to pray to God. Um, another definition for prayer was worship, the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity. And so those are some of the definitions for prayer. And so plain and simple, um, it's conversation. It's communication between you and God. So when you get before God, you're talking with God. And so that is what prayer is. And so now that we understand prayer, what is the purpose of prayer? If someone said, okay, I get it. You're telling me that prayer, it's me talking to God, communi communicating with God. So if someone was to say, okay, but what is the purpose of it? Why do I need to pray? Why does it even matter? What What is the purpose of prayer? Why does it matter? What would you tell them? Um, and then to add on to the questions, but you don't even have to ask, answer that. Can you be a Christian without a prayer life? So answer whichever question you want. What's the purpose of prayer? Why does it matter? And can you be a Christian without a prayer life? And so those are some of the questions that you can answer. And while you are typing your answer, I want to read something that I put down. I put the purpose of prayer is not just to make your request known because I'm asking the question, what is the purpose of prayer? Why does it matter? So the purpose of prayer is not just to make your request known to God saying, God, I want this. God, I need that. But it's about seeking God earnestly. So so let's be clear. You can go to God and ask him for certain things. That can be done during your prayer time. But if that's the only thing that you're doing in your prayer time, then you are missing key elements of prayer. And so the question is, what is the purpose of prayer? And I see in the chat, prayer strengthens our relationship with God which in turn enables us to hear from God and walk in his purpose. I love that answer. That's from our pastor, McLeod. I'm going to read that again. Prayer strengthens our relationship with God, which in turn enables us to hear from God and walk in his purpose. And for those that are joining, we're talking about prayer. And so go ahead, feel free to continue to um, leave your comments in the chat, but I'm going to get going on this. And so what is the purpose of prayer? Why does it matter? So prayer gives us a better understanding of God, we get to know God better when we pray. So that's one of the purposes of prayer, getting to know God better. 
It helps us to develop a relationship with God. It brings us closer to God. And I'm going to use Jeremiah 29 verse 13. This is a very familiar scripture that many of us knows. And it says, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And so again, prayer is that moment, that time when we're able to seek God. And like I just read, when we seek God, it says that we will find him when we search for him with all our hearts. Okay. So again, prayer gives us a better understanding of God. We get to know who God is. It helps to um, helps us to develop a relationship with God. It brings us closer to God. And then prayer invites the Holy Spirit in. And you know, especially in these days, we need the Holy Spirit. So Acts 4, verse 31, and I'm going to read that again. Say that again. Acts 4, verse 31. And it says, and when they had prayed, we're talking about prayer and, and the purpose of prayer and why it matters. So Acts 4, verse 31 says, and when they had prayed, not when they talked, not when they sat and, and played on their phone, not when they called someone up and chatted, not when they sang praises, even though that's important, but we're talking about prayer. But it says, and when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continue to speak the word of God with boldness. And so we see that prayer is important and it matters because it invites the Holy Spirit in. And then not only that, but if you look at that verse, it says that they were also, they also obtained boldness. And so prayer grants us boldness as well. Okay, more reasons why prayer matters and why prayer is important and the purpose of prayer. Prayer helps us to be more Christian-like, right? So the more time that we spend with God, the more time that we spend in his presence, we find ourselves to be a little bit more patient, right? A little bit more loving, a little bit more kind. And so that's why prayer matters. Prayer changes our heart, our motives, our desires, which is important because we want our desires to align with God's desires, right? And so prayer changes our heart, our motives, our desires, because sometimes our heart isn't right. If, if our thoughts could be um, broadcast uh, on TV or wherever, some of us would be ashamed, including myself, because sometimes the thoughts aren't right. When someone upsets you, sometimes the thoughts aren't right. When someone betrays you, sometimes the thoughts aren't right. And sometimes our heart towards them are not right. Okay. And so prayer changes our hearts, our motives, desires. And I, I put this here because this, this was funny to me. And I was thinking about this as I was preparing this. I said, have you ever went before God about someone and God speaks to you about you? So you thought you were going to God about someone and God said, uh, 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 uh. let me speak to you about you. And so that's what prayer does. Let's look at Psalms 139 verse 23 and 24. Psalms 139 verses 23 and 24. And I want to read some of the comments that we have in the chat. So Evangelist Thomas says, we cannot remain a Christian without prayer because through prayer, God reveals himself to us. And that is one way we are empowered in God. That is so good. Sister White says prayer is a powerful weapon. Amen. There's a song. My my oh no, that's my praise the weapon, but we know that prayer is powerful. Um, and so in Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart, try me and know my anxieties, and see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. And so when we get before God, 
He points out our intentions and our motives. Maybe we were doing good things, but with the wrong intentions. I'm going to do this. And yes, it's a good thing, but I'm doing it so I can get blank or so I can get connected with blank. And so sometimes our intentions aren't right. But when we get with God, he reveals our heart. He reveals our intentions. Okay. And then prayer helps us to resist temptation. Man, oh man. There are so many things to distract us and to pull us from God, to to make us lose our focus of God and to tempt us, whether we're on our phones, whether we're watching TV, whether we're out, it doesn't matter. Temptation is all around. And so when we get in prayer, God gives us the strength. He enables us to resist temptation Turn to Matthew 26, verse 41. And this is such a good verse concerning resisting temptation. That's Matthew 26, verse 41. And it says, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. There's many times that our heart is, we want to do right. We want to do right. We desire to make the right decisions. We desire to please God. So the spirit indeed is willing, but that flesh of ours is something else. It says, but the flesh is weak. And so Jesus was telling his disciples, watch and pray. So be alert, be alert and pray that you do not enter into temptation. None of us is too big, too high, too spiritual, too close to God. Um, we all need to be alert and to pray so that we do not fall into temptation. It doesn't matter how close we are to God. Temptation is there and we must draw close to God. And then prayer provides us with answers. It gives us direction. It helps us to discern. So turn to James 1 verse 5. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, Let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. And so when we go to God, when we seek God, if we have a question that we need answered, if we need direction, God, should I take this job? God, should I move? God, what should I do with these kids that are being disobedient? Whatever the case is, God, should I start this business? Should I close this business? Should I be in this relationship? So if there's questions that you have, if you need direction, if you need to be able to discern, God, is this friendship really good for me? Is this relationship really good for me? And even these days, God, is this church? Is this the church that I need to be in? Is this church right for me? And so when we go to God, he grants us that wisdom when we go to God in prayer. And then prayer is important because it provides us with strength strength for the things we have to deal with in life. So prayer restores us. It refreshes us. When we're in the presence of God, it grants us that peace, that joy. Our burdens are lifted when we go to God in prayer. And so turn to Matthew 11, verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. And for those that are joining, we're talking about why prayer is important. What is the purpose of prayer? That's the topic tonight. What is the purpose of prayer? Why is prayer um, important? And so Matthew 11, verse 28, for those that are weary and worn and discouraged and burning with the cares of life. Matthew 11, verse 28 tells us, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burden and I will give you rest. And so prayer, again, strengthens us, restores us, refreshes us. And then lastly, what I put, prayer gives us a chance to make our requests known to God. That's the part that we love. I'm not saying we don't like all the other things, but we love to go to God and say, God, this is what I'm in need of. Okay, and so prayer gives us that chance to make our requests known to God. And first John five, verse 14 through 15. Again, that's first John five, verse 14 through 15. It says, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will. Let me say that part, though. That if we ask anything according to his will, must be according to his will, 
he hears us. And if he and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. And so earlier I talked about the desires of our heart, our heart, our desires, our intentions. And I talked about when we get in the presence of God, he changes our heart. He changes our motives. He changes our intentions. He changes our desires. And so what we pray will begin to align what he desires for us as well. And so I wanted to stress that part on if we ask any, anything according to his will. Okay. And then Matthew 7, verse 7 through 8. That's Matthew 7, verse 7 through 8. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks, it will be opened. And so God is saying, listen, I'm here. You can come to me. You just need to take the time out to come to me and I will hear you and I will answer you. And sometimes that answer may be a no or wait, but he will answer us. Okay. And so the next question, the first question was, what's the purpose of prayer? Why does it matter? So the next question is, when should we pray? So we know what prayer is. We know the purpose of prayer and why it matters. So when should we pray? When should we pray? Is it once a day, twice a day, three times a day? Uh, What would you tell someone if they said, well, when should I pray? What would you say? And while you answer that, I just want to go and just make sure I'm not missing any comments in the chat. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, Sister Evangelist Thomas said, when we get in the presence of God, he changes things on our behalf. We should pray always. And Uplifted Heart, she said the same thing. We should pray always. And then I see that she added on to her comment, we should pray without ceasing. It seems like you are taking a peek at my scriptures. Um, Sister Lundy said we should pray every day throughout the day. Amen. I agree with all those answers. And so now let's get to the word because I could say that you can say that, but where does the word say that? And so since it's Bible study, we're going to drop some more uh, scriptures. And so Romans 12, you can go ahead and drop all the scriptures. Um, when should we pray? So Romans 12, verse 12, it says, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation. And then listen to this. It says, be constant in prayer, be constant in prayer. First Thessalonians 5, verse 17. And if you go to the chat, all you have to do is open up that last um, chat, that last message that was sent from Fountainside and all the verses are there. First Thessalonians 5, verse 17. Someone left that as a comment, but I'm saying it now. Pray without ceasing. Colossians 4, verse 2. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Ephesians 6 verse 18 says, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. And then Philippians 4 verse 6 says, do not be anxious. So before you get anxious, before you get, you start to worry, you don't want to wait till you get anxious. You don't want to wait till you're already stressed and worried. You want to be proactive. You don't want to be reactive. So it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So your prayer should be accompanied with praise and thanks. Um, Let your requests be made known to God. Okay. And so as you can see, and I saw it in the chats, you're saying we need to pray always. I saw all those chats, praying not to faint. 
Um, and then um, Mother McLeod, she says, as often as possible, his presence is always with us. And so, yes, pray all the time. God is here. He's with us. He can hear us. So you can pray in the car. You can pray at work. You can pray while you're cooking. You can pray while you're showering. You can pray at any time. So we are to pray always. All right. So the next question what should occur before we make requests to God? So when we're going to go to God in prayer, what should we do before we make any requests to God? How do we clear the air? What do we do? How do we prepare ourselves um, to pray? What are some steps that we should take before we make our requests known? Thank you. I see my cousin Trudy has joined. Thank you so much for joining. And while you leave your comments in the chat, I'm going to get going because I don't want us to run out of time. So the question was, why? what should occur before we make requests to God? And for those of you that are joining, we're talking about prayer and the importance of prayer. Um, and so the question, what should occur before we make requests to God? So Anisha, Sister White, she said repentance. Uh, Sandy K, Sister Sandy K, she said worship for who he is. That's so good. Um, Pastor McLeod said ask God to search us, cleanse us as we go into his presence. So all good answers. Continue to leave your answers and I'm going to go ahead and move forward. So things that should occur before we make our requests to God. We And I'm not, they're not in any specific order. I'm just calling them out. Okay. We need to forgive. Forgiveness is so important. Mark 11, verse 25, turn to it. Turn to it real quick. Mark 11, verse 25. We're talking about forgiving. One of the things that we need to do before we make our request known to God. Mark 11, verse 25 says, And whenever you stand praying, forgive, forgive. If you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. And so when we're going to God, we need to make sure, God, I'm letting this thing go. I release this person to you. I release this situation to you. God, help me to forgive. But you must forgive before you go to God in prayer. The Bible says if you don't forgive, how do you expect to be forgiven? So you must forgive and you must forgive so that your prayers can be answered. We must go to God in reverence. So prepare yourself. Go to God in reverence. Prayer is a privilege. Sometimes we treat and I don't want to say we I'm not saying you, but sometimes people let me say that sometimes people treat prayer like it's a chore or it, it's it's let me hurry up and check this off my my Christian to do list. No, prayer is a privilege. And we're all I think most of us are familiar with that song that says what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. And so prayer is a privilege. OK, we are praying to a holy God. A God that's holy, a God that um, cannot have any parts with sin, a God that sees our thoughts, our intentions, that knows when we've sinned and every detail of the sin that we've committed. And yet he chooses to commune with us and have a relationship with us. And so when we go to God, we need to understand that, that he's a holy God. But yet he's still willing to hear from us. So we need to go to God with respect. We're not treating God like he's one of our, our little friends. Hey, God, what's up? No, we need to go to God reverently. And I, I put this Revelations 4 verse 8. It's up to you. It doesn't necessarily have to go in the chat, but I'm going to read it. Revelations 4 verse 8. It says the creatures in heaven, heaven continuously say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And I was doing a little research on this and I pulled this from um, the gospelcoalition.org and I quote, um, 
quote, it is the only description of God repeated in the threefold formula. I'm going to say that again. So when, when you, when you hear, when you read, or when you hear holy, 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 it says it is the only description of God repeated in the threefold formula. This is a literary device to bring great emphasis. So the purpose of it is to bring great emphasis. So God is not just a little holy. God is really, really, really holy. So God is holy. I can't stress that anymore. And that's why it is it is stressed in the Bible. Holy, holy, holy. It's not God is holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And so we have a chance to go before a God that is holy without sin. Yet we have sinned time and time again and probably will continue to sin because none of us are perfect. And then even if you look at the Old Testament, you see how the priests had to prepare themselves before they went before God and the sacrifices that they had to make and all the steps that had to be taken before they could go into the presence of God. And because of Jesus, we don't have to do that anymore, but we still need to go to God reverently. Okay, we have to go to God with a high level of respect. And then we need to remove distraction. So what should happen before we pray? Remove distractions as much as possible. Because if you have some little kids, you can't always remove your little kids from your area. You need to keep an eye on them. But as much as possible, you want to remove all distractions. Your focus should be on God. And then you want to be honest with yourself. Go to God. Be honest. Be honest about yourself. Matthew 6, verse 7. And and be yourself. So be honest with yourself and then be yourself. Because some of us, when we pray, we try to be real fancy and that's not even us. Oh God, heavenly father who sits on high. No, go to God. Be yourself. Matthew 6, verse 7 says, and when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard with their many words. And so it's not about your big fancy words and your your expansive vocabulary. It's about going to God humbly, honestly, being yourself. And then speaking of humbly, Matthew 6, verse 6, we're not doing it for a show. We're not praying to, to God for a show. Matthew 6, verse 6 says, But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And that was Matthew 6, verse 6. So it's humbly. It's not for a show. It's not to try to make ourselves look good and righteous. It's not about saying a super long prayer doesn't mean that it's it's a, a genuine prayer from the heart. You know, we can do a really long prayer. Some of us, you know, if you've been in church long enough, some of us are guilty. We feel like we have to, when they call us to prayer, we have to say a long prayer because it shows that we're spiritual. And let me pause and say, if that's you and that if it's coming from your heart and that's what you do, then that's okay. But if you're forcing it because you want to be like Sue and Jean and whoever else, then that's where it's a problem. Be yourself, be humble, be honest. And then when you're going to God, have faith. You can't go to God and you're already doubting. God, I don't know if you're going to do this. Uh, I don't know, God. No. When you're going before God, make sure you're going knowing that, God, I know that you can do this. I know that you're able. I know that you're willing to do this for me. And then you want to have the mindset that God loves you. You're not going to God feeling like he doesn't care enough to hear and answer your prayers. God desires to have that relationship with us. And so when you go before God, you want to have that mindset and you want to have that understanding that God loves you. He cares and he wants to hear from you. Okay. And so now that we've discussed, let's do a summary. What should occur before we make requests? So we discuss what is prayer? What is the purpose of prayer? Why does it matter? When should we pray? And what should occur before we make requests to God? 
And so we discuss all of that. We want to forgive. We want to go to God in reverence. We want to remove distractions. We want to be honest, to be ourselves. We want to go to God humbly, have faith, and have the mindset that God loves and cares for us. And so now that we've covered all of that, the next question is, how do we pray? And this is some something that some people struggle with. It's something that I struggle with. I felt like, God, is my prayer good enough? I don't sound like other people sound. Um, and, and I used to question and struggle with that. And I've actually had a Bible study with a group of ladies and some of them expressed that, well, am I praying good enough? Is my prayer right? And so the question is, how do we pray? How to pray? And I feel like Jesus left us the perfect example of how to pray. If you look at Matthew 6, verse 9 through 13, that's Matthew 6, verse 9 through 13, Jesus left us an example of how to pray. And let me just pause and look in the chat and make sure I didn't miss anything. So Sister Evangelist Thomas, she said, God loves when we come to him honestly, genuinely, and humbly. I love that. And then she also said, we must approach God respectfully and reverently. So important. Sister Lundy said, some people think that prayer is just asking for what they want when there's more components to prayer, exactly. And so that's what we discussed earlier for those that that may have come on late. We discussed that what prayer is, it's not just about making requests. There's so many things that we get from from prayer and what should be done in our prayer time. And we're we're not done, there's more to this. There's more to this, so we're gonna get there. But Matthew 6, verse nine through 13, Verse nine, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. This is Jesus teaching his disciples because they said, Jesus teaches how to pray. And I've I've done that in my prayer time. If you feel like your prayer, like God, something's missing. God, something doesn't feel like it's connected. Talk to God about it. Be honest. So Jesus was telling his disciples, this is what you do. Verse nine, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so let's let's go back and look at each verse at a time. So verse nine, Jesus starts with our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And this is something that I discussed a couple weeks ago in a Bible study that I was doing. Um, we spoke about adoration. How do we adore God? What What is adoration? Adoration is telling God who he is. God, you're holy. God, you're awesome. God, you're mighty. God, you are righteous. God, you are a defender. God, you are uh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. And you just go through and you're telling God, God, this is who you are. You are great. You are mighty. You are strong. You are powerful. You are all I need. So you're just giving God adoration. And so this is what Jesus started with, with adoration. And then verse 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And so Jesus prayed for God's will to be done on this earth. Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. And so Jesus makes a request. So he made his request known. And he was telling the teaching the disciples, yes, when you go to God, you can make your request known to God. Verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And so we spoke about forgiveness earlier. And before you go to God, make sure that you're forgiving. Okay, so if we want forgiveness, we have to forgive. And so it's saying, God, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then verse 13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So again, he goes from asking for forgiveness to making another request. 
And then for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so he ends with adoration and praise. And so we see the example that Jesus said he made sure to, to give God adoration and praise. He made sure that he made his request known. He made sure that he asked for, for forgiveness. And so this is what he was teaching his disciples. And so let me give you a couple more. You're asking how to pray. We talked about the model prayer. Jesus gave the example. But let's talk about some more things. When praying, be clear and specific. So, for example, God, I need a touch from you. What does that mean? Are you sick? Do you need the Holy Ghost? What does that mean? And so when you go to God, be specific in what you're asking for. God, I'm not feeling good right now. God, my stomach has been giving me problems. God, I'm asking that you will touch and heal my stomach. God, I'm asking that you will save my children. God, I'm asking that you'll bless my ministry. But be um, specific and clear when you are praying because God desires for us to ask. And so when we're asking, it should be clear. It should be specific. We're talking about how to pray. And then next you want to be my two favorite words that I mention often when I'm talking about things. Consistent and persistent. Okay? When you're praying and in prayer, be consistent and persistent. And I love this. I was doing some research on this. Let me give you the difference because you might say, well, isn't that kind of the same thing? Consistent, persistent. So let, let's talk about it. It says, while persistence is about pushing through obstacles and setbacks, let me say that again, while persistence is about pushing through obstacles and setbacks, consistency is about putting in the work every day and sticking to a routine. And so you've heard people commonly um, teach, you know, you should have a prayer time, a set prayer time. And I think that's a wonderful idea. But there are some people that are so busy, some people that have children, um, especially if you have a baby to say, OK, I'm going to do this at six o'clock when you just put that baby to sleep at 530 and you're just getting to sleep. That may be difficult. And so I like this because it's saying do it every day and set a routine. So doing it every day and setting a routine can be saying, OK, God, I don't know if I could do this seven o'clock every day. But what I am going to do to be consistent and to make this a habit and a routine, God, I'm dedicating 30 minutes to you. God, I'm going to dedicate an hour to you. Now, whenever that time comes, you know, yes, it's good to have a designated prior time. But if we want to be realistic, some of us have so many things going on in our day, projects, work, children, etc., cetera, work in doubles, work in two, three jobs. And so make sure that you are taking time out of your day to spend with God. And so I want to read that again. While persistence is about pushing through obstacles and setbacks. So God, regardless of what I'm going through, regardless of how stressed I am, regardless of how I'm feeling, God, I'm going to press through and I'm going to seek you. Okay? Consistency is about putting in the work every day and sticking to a routine. Consistency is a requirement. I love this. Listen to this. If you aren't paying attention before, pay attention now. Consistency is a requirement for long-term success. So if we want to have a successful Christian life, walk with God, we must have consistency in prayer. Consistency is a requirement for long-term success. Persistence will move you through the encountered obstacles. So consistency equals long-term success. Persistence will move you through the encountered obstacles. I think somebody should insert a shout right there. Persistence will move you through the encountered obstacles. And so when you're facing obstacles, in life, when the enemy is fighting you hard, 
If you make up in your mind, God, no matter what, I'm going to seek you. No matter what, I'm going to spend time with you. I'm going to get in your presence and I'm going to push through these feelings of depression and sadness and loneliness and anxiety and every other feeling. I'm going to push through and persist through those feelings. It says that it will move you through those obstacles. And so listen, if you're persistent, if you're consistent in prayer, you won't be able to dwell long in certain situations. Okay. And it, while I was reading that, it kind of reminded me of, I don't know if you guys remember this. This used to be on t-shirts, hats, a little bit of everything. You guys remember that acronym per, uh, PUSH? You used to see that on everything, PUSH. What does PUSH mean? Pray until something happens. And so you want to be persistent, consistent, and you want to pray until something happens. And so that's how you pray. You Give God adoration. God, you are awesome. You are worthy. You are mighty. You are strong. You are great, greatly to be praised. You ask for God's will to be done because sometimes we're asking for things that's not in the will of God or we're asking it, but not with the right heart. God, I need $5,000. What you need it for? Oh, so I can show off and buy a purse. And that was just an example. But what I'm saying is sometimes we ask for things and it's not with the right heart. It's not with the right motives. And it's so we could show off in others or act like we're so big and bad or whatever else. And so pray that God's will be done. Make your request known. Make sure that you've forgiven. And then again, you want to go back to that adoration, that praise, that thanks. Be specific, be clear, be consistent and persistent. And so now let's look at some prayer models because now they have all these prayer models. Some of you are probably familiar with quite a few of them. And one that I've been recently teaching is the Axi model. And so we're going to go into some different prayer models because listen, there's no one way to go before God, but it's good to know, okay, wh what, what can I do? How, how sh about how should it look? And like I said, Jesus gives us that example. So let's look at some prayer models. So the first one prayer model that I'm going to discuss, it's called AXI. And that's A-C-T-S-I. That is not a real word. Just for some of you, if you're wondering, is that a word? It's not a word. The A in AXI means adoration. So that's praising God for who he is. And this is important because it helps us to focus on God and invite his presence. There's been times where I try to go straight into prayer and I realize that I'm so distracted or I'm so burdened with things going on. But I notice that when I go into prayer, worshiping God, even if I went in and I want to be honest, there has been times where I didn't feel like praying because I was so burdened about something. I was discouraged. But when I went to God and began to give God praise and thanks and worshiping God and adoring God, it helped me to focus. It helped me to focus on God and who he is. And let's, let's read some words of adoration. I got this. Um, there's so many. So, so make up your own. Learn to worship God yourself and adore God yourself. But just in case you need a little help, let me read some for you. And this is from a book that I was reading from Pastor John Hanna. So words of adoration, God, you are all I have. You're all I need. You're all I want. You're all powerful. You're amazing. You're glorious. You're great. You're Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. There's no one like you. You're magnificent. You're mighty. You're Abba Father, Defender, Champion, 
my closest friend, my cornerstone, my deliverer, my foundation, my healer, my hiding place, my peace. And then it continues, my joy, et cetera, et cetera. And so if you're saying, well, how do I do this? How do I do this? I gave you examples of it. You're just telling God who he is. You're my deliverer. My favorite one that I love to say when I'm in prayer is, God, you are my defender. Because there's so many times where I know the enemy was trying to set me up. But God came through. And so one of my things that I love to say when I'm thanking God and adoring God, I say, God, you are my defender because he delivers me time and time again. You're my redeemer. You're my savior. You're my comforter. You're my peace. You're my joy. You're my hiding place. And so you're adoring God and it helps you to focus on God. And not only does it help you to focus on God, but it invites his presence in. Okay. It says that God inhabits the praises of his people. And so when we begin to adore and praise God, it invites his presence in. Okay, now the C in Axi, so A-C-T-S-I. The C in Axi of the prayer model that I'm discussing is confession. So confession is owning your sins. We're not making no excuses for it. Well, God, she did this to me. He said this about me. I heard they were talking about, we're not going to God and making any excuses. If our behaviors weren't right, if our actions weren't right, then we're asking God, we're confessing it. We're giving it to God because we know that God is holy. We discussed that earlier, that God is holy and that sin separates us. But when we confess, what does the Bible say? If we confess, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so it breaks down that barrier between us and God. And so you want to adore God, invite his presence in, then you confess. And then the, um, and then we want to go into Thanksgiving, thanking God for all he has done. God, I thank you for healing me. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my husband. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for food. Thank you for clothes. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my kids, et cetera, et cetera. You're going in and you're thanking God. And then the S is supplication. This is prayers of request for ourselves. So God, I'm in need of your strength. God, I'm going through a difficult time. God, they've been challenging me at work. God, my kids are acting up. But you're making supplication for yourself. And then the I in Axi, A-C-T-I, is intercession. And that's prayers of request for others. So now you're interceding for others. You may know someone that's sick. You may know that someone that's going through a difficult time. God, strengthen them. God, grant them healing according to your will. God, provide for them. God, make a way for them. Comfort them, God. They just lost someone. Grant them your peace. Grant them your comfort. Surround them with your peace and your presence. And so you're interceding. Okay? So that was the prayer, the prayer model axi. A-C-T-S-I. Now the next prayer model praise. Oh, but you know what? I wanted to read this verse in intercession. I'm so sorry. And I I feel it's so important to read this. First Timothy two, verse one through four. I'm going to say that again. First Timothy two, verse one through four. And I love what Sister Lundy, Sister Christine says in the in the chat. She says, when we don't know how to pray, take a moment and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Yes, yes, and yes. Yes, and amen. Um, and then, hold on, Sister Georgia Thomas, you're skipping ahead of me. We're going to get that. Praying the word. We're going to get that. Get there. Um Okay. All right. So now let's go to verse Timothy 2, verse 1 through 4. So I urge you, first of all, we're talking about intercession, the, the I in the Axie prayer model. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people, all people. Ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God for our, and sorry, this is good and pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. And so you see how important intercession is? One is saying we should pray for everyone. 
Ask God to help them and saying intercede on their behalf. Give thanks for them. Pray for your leaders. This is what it's saying. Pray for your leaders. Pray for those who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives. And so as the body of Christ, we are to be praying for those that are unsaved. We are to be praying for our leaders in the government, leaders in our churches. We must be lifting them up. And when we do so, it leads to peace and, and quiet and quietness. And then it says marked by godliness and dignity. So it's so important for us to do that. Let's move along. The next prayer model is parts, P-A-R-T-S, praise. The P in, in, in the P stands for praise. The A stands for ask. The R stands for repent, confession, you know, same thing. And then T, thanks, S, share. Now, Evangelist Georgia Thomas, this is what she said. She said, pray the word. And this is actually a prayer model that I had never heard of before. I don't even know if I should call it a prayer model, but it's called divine reading. That's the first time I ever heard of it is when I was studying for this, for this Bible study. So it's divine reading. In divine reading, it may be compared to feasting on the word of God. So there are four steps and these are the four steps. So the four steps are reading the Bible. So again, you're talking about feasting, eating, okay? So the four steps are reading the Bible, which is taking a bite. So when you're reading, you wanna read the passage slowly. You want to pay attention to what it's saying. Read it several times if you need to. Underline it, highlight it if you need to. Okay, so you're reading, that's taking the bite. Then you're meditating on it, which is chewing it. And so when you're meditating, try to grasp the meaning of the passage. Be aware of God's presence in your life. And so when you're meditating, God help me to, to fully understand this, okay? Um, but you want to meditate on it. Memorize it, meditate on it. That's chewing it. Then praying, that's savoring the word of God. So praying, you want to respond to God. Um, you want to converse with him about the passage and his will, or you want to pray the word. So God, I thank you that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment, you shall condemn. Thank you, God, that you've made me the head and not the tail above and not beneath. Thank you, God, that you've made me more than a conqueror. Thank you, God, that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you, God, that you've not given me the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Thank you, God, that by your stripes I'm healed. And you're just going through and you're praying the word of God over your life, over your family. And then the last one is digesting. You want to digest it. So contemplating its applications, you want to focus on God, rest in his presence, and commit yourself to living out his will, especially as reflected in, reflected in the reading. And so I took you through the different models. That was three different models of how to pray. However, I started with the key model, which is Jesus teaching his disciples how to pray. And so we have so many examples of what to do in our prayer time. So let's do a, a quick summary. So we discuss what is prayer. I gave multiple definitions, but I'll just give you this quick one. It's communication with God. Then we talked about well, what is the purpose of prayer? Why does it matter? And we said that it gives us a better understanding of God. It helps us to draw us closer to God. It helps us be more Christ-like. It changes our hearts, our motives. It helps us to resist temptations. It provides us with answers and direction, gives us strength, refreshes us. And then it's a chance for us to make our requests known to God. When should we pray? In summary, you pray always, pray throughout the day, pray in your car, pray in the shower, pray when you're cooking, pray when you're whatever, just pray, pray always, pray as much as you can. And then what should occur before you make your request known to God? Forgive, go to God reverently, um, be honest, remove distractions, have faith, have a mindset that God wants to hear and answer you. How to pray, we just discussed that. The prayer models, we just discussed that. And so now I hope you have a better understanding of prayer. Um, the next time I teach, I'm thinking of doing uh, 
covering why is it difficult to pray at times? Because we've all had to press through and we've all had that happen to us. So why is it sometimes difficult to pray? And then the results of prayer. That's something that we didn't touch on. It's something I wanted to touch on, but I knew we would run out of time. And so that's something that I could do the next time I come before you. And so I'm going to go ahead and close this out in prayer. Again, let's go before God. Let's seek God. If every time we need to pray and spend time in the word of God and seeking him and drawing closer to him and getting in his presence, it is now. And so make prayer a part of your every day life and um and i wanted to read that thing about consistent persistent i want to say that again consistency is a requirement for long-term success persistence will move you through the encountered obstacles and so remain consistent remain persistent in prayer God, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your word, God. Your word is so sweet. It's so good to me. Thank you, Father God, that you left us all this goodness for us to study and to learn and to grow from. And so, God, I'm asking that you will place in us a hunger and a desire to seek you, to pray, to spend time with you, God, and that we will go before you reverently, that we will let go of anything that is blocking us from you and from you answering our prayers. And so, God, I'm asking that you will do your work in each of our hearts, in each of our lives. God, help us to be consistent and persistent in prayer that we will intercede on the behalf of others, God. The world is turning upside down, it seems, God, but we know that prayer can make a difference. And so God, help us to rise up and to be the men and women of God that you have called us to be and to pray and intercede on behalf of our children, our loved ones, this government, this world. And so God, I just thank you and praise you for igniting a fire within us that we will continue to get before you and in your presence. And I give you thanks and praise for doing it in Jesus name, amen. And so on behalf of my wonderful, handsome husband, Pastor McLeod and the Fountainside Church of God. God bless you. Please like and share this. Have a wonderful evening, a wonderful night. God bless you all.